Well, the process of a divorce, when children are involved, well, it can get pretty ugly. It can also be very traumatic and damaging to the emotional well-being of a child, especially when one parent chooses to poison the mind of the child, to alienate them from the family. Carissa Sedell is a partner and family law attorney with Jayberg Wilk, and she's here to help us recognize the signs of this term that I have not heard until just recently called parental alienation. Carissa, what, what is that exactly? What does that mean? So parental alienation uh, is pretty prevalent in high conflict divorces or high conflict custody cases. It is a set of behaviors or actions that's taken by a parent with the intent to manipulate or improperly influence that child's behavior or that child's relationship with the other parent. So give me some examples. What would that look like? Some examples would be um, allowing the child to view your text messages or your emails with your the nasty other parents. Ones. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. Um, you know, the one where somebody accidentally says something that they didn't really want to say, um, and then they show that to the child. Uh, it's bad mouthing the other parent. Mm. It's talking negatively uh, to the other parent when the child is actually present, say, you know, during an exchange or it's also allowing the child to make an adult decision such as you don't need to go to your father's or your mother's house. Wow. Okay. How does that affect the child in the end? I, I mean, besides the obvious impact upon right. that child's relationship with the other parent, it can have short-term and long-term effects. And some studies have actually shown that it can negatively influence that child's ability to form trusting, intimate relationships uh, throughout their adulthood. Absolutely. How does how do you know that's happening? How does the other parent know that, you know what, this could be a problem here? So a lot of times the signs are very, very subtle. And a lot of times it takes a while before you start to pick up on those signs. Um, one example is when uh, your telephone calls are being monitored by the other parent. Um, another example is the child obviously says, I'm not coming to your house any longer, mm -hmm. or the child stops taking your telephone calls altogether. Those are pretty extreme examples. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the smaller, less, uh, less obvious examples is say you go to the soccer field, you're always at the soccer field watching your child, and where the child used to run up to you and say, hey dad, how are you? All of a sudden that child's sitting on the other side next to mom and not interacting or having any uh, interaction with the, with the other parent. So if you suspect something like that is happening, what, what can you do about it? What should you do about it? Well, a, a parent who suspects that there's some sort of alienating behaviors going on needs to bring it to the forefront, bring it to the court's attention as okay. quickly as possible. Early intervention is the key. You're going to need specific court orders, court orders that make sure that you are going to have specific and ongoing contact with your child as well. It's, it's very advisable to get a forensically trained mental health professional involved uh, for therapeutic purposes in order to make sure that that relationship doesn't get any worse. And that might be part of the examples or the documentation. Is there anything that the other parent can be doing to help support their case if they do think that's happening? Absolutely. I mean, keep keep absolutely clear notes of everything. Keep dates, keep, keep times, keep photos, keep text messages, keep emails, write down specifics because a forensic mental health professional is going to want all of those sorts of specific behaviors in order to uh, uh, assess, is this actually alienation or is this something else that's going on? Because there are other things that could be contributing and it's not alienation. Right, right, gotta be careful, be careful what you do yes. parents. Carissa, thank you so much. Really good information. Of course, Chris is a family law attorney with Jay Berg Wilk, and you can find her and other family law attorneys at their location, which is 3200 North Central Avenue. It's Suite 2000, and they are in Phoenix. Here's the number to call. It's 602-248-1000. By the way, Chris wrote a very detailed web article on this, so you can find it on our website, sonoranliving.com. You can also learn more at jaybergwilk.com.